Christina here from the Reclaimed Heirloom, and I want to show you how I'm going to transform this old armoire. So, starting off with some chalk paint, I'm using Annie Salone's chalk paint in Country Grey. So I'm just going to start this project with a simple base coat and what I want to do is just outline where I want to place the colors for this particular project. The colors I chose are the Country Grey, uh, Obus and Blue, and I also am going to use En Fleur, which is kind of like a chocolate brown as well. You can use any chalk paint product that you have or you prefer to use or what you may already have. So when working with chalk paint, I find it really, really helpful to have a spray water bottle on hand. And I generally try to keep my brush uh, moist as I continue on, even with my base coats. This will help move that chalk paint around. It's a very, very thick paint, as well as you're gonna use a lot less paint. As I mentioned, I generally just like to place the color coding where I'm going to go with this design and any drawers or doors, I like to pull them out and paint around so the paint doesn't gather around there. And it's just a little bit smoother and adds continuity to the piece and the design. So I am using a separate brush for each of my colors and a personal favorite is the small palm chippy brush and any of the products that I'm using you can find in the description box below. But whatever you have on hand, whatever you're comfortable to use, go for it. It's just paint in a brush and have some fun. That's the big part of making and recreating something all your own. As a general rule, when you're placing your base coat down, it's not going to look too, too pretty. Again, you're just building up that base and creating that color code design in which you want to, to do on a personal preference. And I'm just showing you the example with this piece. When I blend a small little area, I do find it a little bit easier just to spray my brush when I'm blending, but with a larger area, it can be advantageous to just spray directly onto the larger section area that you are blending with your brushes. Again, this is just my base coat. I'm not looking for perfection. What I want to do is make sure that I have the color outlines designed where I want them on the piece, and then we can go back and do some more blending, um, and even a little bit easier. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm going to do that, and I'm gonna walk you through the steps and the materials that I use. The key trick with any blending when you're using brushes is literally back and forth and up and down. The more you do that, the more the transition of the colors come together in a much smooth, even tone. So let's take a look at an aerial of this entire piece with its first base coat. And as you can see that I've kind of put that color outline where I want it and do I want to add a little bit more and give you a side uh, profile here on both of the sides of this armoire. And you can see that it's coming together and we're going to let this dry and then we're going to continue on with the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and use General Finishes Water Base Glazed Effects, just the clear base. And I'm going to add a little bit of a glaze extender in that, as well as just an old chippy brush. I'm also going to show you how I use my Wooster Pro Wool Meshing Applicator. If you ever need to take a break from your painting project, just throw the brushes into a, a plastic bag and you're good to go. I'm getting a little hyper, so I thought I'd put on some music and get my mojo going. I think really at this point of this project, I'm actually just really high on coffee and I think it might be time to not drink so much. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put that down and continue on like a normal person. 
So the best way I can explain this meshing applicator with the Pro Wool is you're literally colliding the colors together. You first apply your clear glaze first, add your colors where you had them placed, then you're gonna grab this meshing applicator and you're literally gonna tap those colors into each other. And what it's doing is pulling the paint up and down as you're tapping and it collides the paint together making a beautiful smooth transition. Again, you put your clear glaze down first, then you're going to go and add your colors based on the color format that you started with. So you're adding your second coat to the first one at this point. And with the clear glaze, what the clear glaze is doing is adding a medium to your chalk paint. And it's also giving you enough working time to create that blended transition versus using the consistent flow of a water spray all the time. And I find this so much more comfortable, especially when I want to make um, different transitions of colors and a layout on especially a project this size. And for the little tiny corner areas where there's a recessed part, sometimes just grabbing your brush, even with the clear glaze, can help make that smooth transition as well. So, but for the larger body areas, I generally like to use that meshing applicator, the Pro Wool. So again, just showing you a demonstration here at the bottom of this armoire to the drawer, how beautiful it is just to use that Pro Wool and make those really subtle transitions of your colors. And it just goes so much faster than just plain brush and blend, blend, blend over. It is such a time saver. My objective of this piece design is I really wanted to give it a nice old world look. So I really wanted to kind of give that brown on fleur chalk paint, that subtlety of just age and it's had years of history on it. And I want the colors to collide, but I certainly don't want everything to be perfect. I want to look like it naturally aged over time. So this is why I've selected the color code pattern that I have. And again, going around with the meshing applicator is just saving so much blending time. So I'm pretty happy with how it's slowly coming together, but I think I'd like to add in another blended color. So just between that uh, country gray and a and blue, I'm going to go ahead and add some chateau gray into that. And that's the beautiful thing about using the um, clear glaze is if you want to go back and add in some more shadowing and blending and even an all different color, it's super easy to do that. Again, just go ahead and add your clear glaze first, add the colors where you like them and go ahead and start meshing. It's so easy. Adding some more of the clear glaze is going to reactivate all of the paint that you originally started in the section that you're putting the clear glaze on. So to go and redo anything is super easy. So you can make very subtle corrections. I am just looking to make that transition between the country gray and the abusum blue with just a little bit more color into that. And I just thought that using this color tone was gonna to add that extra little accent in color design that I was looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this finished and stand back and see if I like it. And then we can move on to the faded stenciling. Now that I introduced the Chateau Grey into the Country Grey at the top, I'm going to go ahead and mesh it into the Abusum Blue towards the bottom on all sides of the armoire. And yeah, I just want to go around and put those touch-ups of the transitions just exactly how I like it, and then we can move on to the faded stenciling. Mm -hmm. 
So a key with using the meshing applicator and doing this whole meshing technique is as you mesh with your colors, it is important to offload. So generally I will have towels on the floor and paper towel in hand. And this is just gonna help remove that excess glaze and paint as you continue on using the Pro Wool uh, meshing applicator. Around those little edges and corners from the doors to the frames of any of your furniture pieces, it can be super helpful to go back to your brush even with using the uh, clear glaze and meshing applicator just to get into those corners and give it a little brush up for your blending process. So let's get started on the um, stenciling and here are some artist brushes I'm going to use as the whole key with what I'm doing for this particular project is I'm going to use the exact same colors that I applied with the um, original color design and what I want to do is I actually want to create each part of this stencil in all the different colors so using the Chateau Grey, Country Grey, the En Fleur, the Abusin Blue, and I'm going to show you a little trick with some graphite just to give it a three-dimensional look. Always super important when stenciling is to use very little paint. You don't want the paint to gather underneath the stencil, so you just want to just kind of tap it on very, very lightly. And you can use any color um, design that you wish. I'm just showing you what I did for this project and you'll see why as we continue on. So I'm just going to peel this off and let's see how this looks so far and then what I want to do is take you to the next step on how I'm going to create a faded stencil look. So with a clean brush and a little towel I just would like to dry brush um, that faded look to the stencil. So using that original country gray color, I want to just tap that in in random around the stencil until it has a nice kind of faded projection on here. Not too much, but just enough because as we continue on with this project, I want to give it more of a vintage feel when we get into some of the waxing. I'm going to walk you through those waxing steps to show you how I gave it a, a vintage antique feel for this particular project. This is where you as the creator of your project can decide how much fading or how little fading you want. Again, I'm just showing you what I did. And because you are dry brushing, the paint is still a little bit moist. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, dry this off so I can show you what I did with the graphite and this stencil. I'm gonna go ahead and place this stencil exactly where I had it. And I want to take a clean brush using uh, just that graphite I showed you earlier. And all I wanna do is go around to the very tips and ends of all of the stencil um, design. And I'm going to just shade it out with that bit of graphite. And when I pull it off, you'll see what I mean by giving it that nice, interesting three-dimensional look. You could also use black wax with the exact same process to give it that extra little touch of dimension instead of using the graphite as well. Just a little added extra tip. So what I'm going to do is measure out my stencil based on the exact piece that I have and really what I want to do is make sure that my stencils are evenly placed. Again, it just all depends on the piece that you're working on and how many stencil pieces you want. But but with my calculations, I had just enough to go ahead and put three stencil prints down the columns right beside the mirror here. So I think that's the design I want to go with. And I'm just showing you what I went ahead and did. And I'm going to mirror this on the other side as well. So again, using the Abusin Blue as well as the En Fleur, I also was able to give it that uh, dry brush effect to fade it out and then went ahead with that little bit of graphite um, after I've done the stencil. And this is pretty much how it's turned out and I'm super delighted with the results. It has that nice faded look. 
Um, it has a little bit more empowerment with the colors kind of running through on the opposite uh, design of the original colors we used as the base. And yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. So I can't wait to go ahead and clear wax this as well as adds even more vintage design to this using the dark wax. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step what I do. Super important to wait for everything to be completely dry and then we can go ahead with the next step and clear wax. To seal your chalk paint projects, very important to use a wax, a clear wax, and or you can use a water-based lacquer as well. Clear wax generally dries within a day or so, but it takes up to 30 days for it to be completely cured to your piece, so you definitely want to be careful with that. But while it's still moist, it's the perfect time to add your dark wax because if you want to take a little bit of the dark wax away, just add your clear wax and this way you have complete control on how much dark wax you want to use. So really important to clear wax first before you go ahead and start with any dark or black wax. I'm using a dark wax uh, brush, but you can use a lint-free cloth as well. It's totally up to you and depending on what you have at home. And I'm going around to all the edges and corners of this piece with the dark wax. Then what I want to do is grab some clear wax and just kind of wipe it back a little bit. And because we have some really good um, textures in the paint, it's actually going to sit in the low points and kind of give it that nice aged vintage feel. And like I mentioned, I'm just going to go around to edges and corners only with the dark wax. I'm not going to go into the center of the pieces where we've done the stenciling. And it's just going to give the whole piece a nice um, dimension and contrast right at those edges and corners. Having that clear wax base is definitely going to give you a lot of forgiveness to how much you want to leave on. So never fear, have fun with this process. It's always good to stand back once in a while and see how much more or how little you want to put on and have fun with it. Here we go with a little bit of that gilding wax just for that hardware that we've painted over so it looks a little bit more like metal again. Important rule when using the gilding wax, a little tiny bit goes a long way. That little tube can last you a very, very long time. So just take your finger and just add a little bit there where the added touches of metal that you want and it makes a beautiful effect and lots of different colors to choose from when it comes to gilding wax. If you've added a little too much or you want to downplay it a little bit, just grab your clear wax and you can wipe it back a bit. Just a little added bonus tip there. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below. And don't forget to subscribe.